Hello, welcome to another video of CS106A Assignment 6 Name Surfer. Uh, this is Kai, and we'll be going through milestone 4 of the program. And this one should be relatively easy just because we're just making the graph of the uh, Name Surfer graph. Um, and uh, I, I'm just, this is going to be pretty quick. So basically, what you need to do is you need to create this graph right here. Okay. So you have a top line, a bottom line, vertical lines, and uh, date labels. Okay, um, should be pretty easy. Except uh, now you're going to call them in a different place because I told you before in the previous program we don't have this update of the resizing of the window, but here we do. And so if you look at name surfer graph, you'll see that there's something called add component listeners, which will listen to the uh, resizing of the graph, <coughs> and at the bottom you implement these uh, methods called. Uh, Avoid component hidden, moved, resized, and every time it's resized, we have an update <coughs> method that reads the changes that are happening with the graph itself. So it re-updates the graph, and that's where we are actually going to draw our graph. Okay, so we're going to draw a graph right here. At the same time, make sure you clear the whole graph, the whole canvas, before you every time you draw the graph. Now. In order to draw a graph, what we need to do is create the method for it. So private void draw graph. And some of the things I told you that we need here are the horizontal lines and the vertical lines. So we'll call draw horizontal lines. And we're going to draw the vertical lines. Vert lines. We also need to draw the date labels. So draw date labels. Uh, okay, so let's take care of the easy one. There's just two horizontal lines, so that would be private void draw horizontal lines. Um, okay, so if we want to draw the horizontal lines, uh, let's go to our constants. We need the margin size. Okay, so the margin size is the number of pixels we want to go from the top and the bottom. <coughs> so that's how much the graph is offset by. And that would actually be represented from 0 to 1,000. So that's going to be our marker right there. Um, now to draw horizontal lines, of course, those are going to be G lines. So G line, let's call that a top line. It's equal to new G line. We need our X coordinate, which would be 0, because that's where it's starting from. Our Y value of graph margin size, because it's going to go down by 20. And then we want the height, or I'm sorry, the width of the actual um, name surfer graph window and we need the again the margin size again right there okay and then don't forget to add the top line uh, so that it appears on the screen we also need the bottom line so G line let's call that the bot line is equal to new G line uh, for the X we need 0 as a starting we need this time our get height. Okay, so it gives you the whole height of the figure minus the margin size. Okay, then we need to get width to to locate the other end of the graph, comma, the same value of y, get height minus margin size. Okay, and once you're done with that, make sure you add that bottom line as well. Okay. Uh the next thing we gotta work on is the vertical lines. <coughs> Alright, so we're going to go ahead and say private void draw vert lines and what we need to draw is we need to draw the um, we got to get the spacing first right so let's create that so let's call that double spacing is equal to the get width uh, divided by the number spacing that's going to be our 12 so we'll just use the end decades <clears throat> yeah, that's right. So get width divided by 12, that would be the spaces in between. Okay? And we'll use that. We'll use that in a for loop. Um, int lines is equal to 0. Lines is less than the number of spacing and decades. Lines plus plus. Okay. And then for each of them, we'll create a G line. Um, so vert line. Is equal is is equal to a new G line 
uh, the initial x would be this line right here. So that would be over by one spacing. And then we want to continue to move by one spacing. So the easiest way to do that is we'll say lines times by times by uh, spacing spacing. But since it's already shifted over by one spacing, it's got to be lines plus one. <coughs> so lines plus one times by the spacing, I don't know why I put that in parentheses, um, should give you the first one, the first vert line. Okay, and then if we have lines equals to one, that'd be two, that'd be this spacing right there. Then three, then four, five, six, everything looks good. Comma. And the vert line goes from 0, because that's the y position at the top, to the bottom. And this one does not change, so we'll copy that over, comma, the get height of the figure. Okay? And then once you're done with that, we need to add the vert line. And you'll have those vertical lines there. Um, okay, the last thing that we need to do is to draw our date label. A little tricky because we have an int and we got to add the numbers and change it to a string. But if you don't know how to do that, you'll see it right here. So private void draw date label. And here, uh, in order to do this right, well, we do need the spacing and we need it for both of them. So how about I do this? I'm going to take this out, put the variable right here. So instance variables, whoops, instance variables. And I'll call that private because it can be used by the other, and we'll use it here as well. <coughs> okay, so then what we're gonna do is first uh, we need to create the date label. So to do that, let's start off with int. Uh, I call it marker is equal to um, zero. Okay, initialize that guy. Uh, create our for loop for the date. Okay by the number of times, so that's going to be in decades, date plus plus. And what we need to do is create the 1900, 1910, 1920, 1930. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to set that marker equal to, um, or sorry, let's say, the, let's call it the um, string. String, we'll call it the date string. We'll set that equal to the marker times by 10 plus our constant, which is our start decade. Okay. So what happens here? And as you can see, it's not really working because this whole thing is calculated as a string. So I told you, you need to use integer dot to string and then wrap this whole entire thing in that parentheses. Okay. So it changes this whole entire int into a string and puts it into date string. <coughs> okay. And so how it works is if date's equal to zero, zero times ten is zero plus start decade, which is nineteen hundred. Uh, marker is equal to one. Uh, huh. I made a boo boo. We don't even need a marker. We can just actually deal with just using the date. So date is now 1, 1 times 10 plus start is 1910. Date is 2, 20, so 20 plus 1900 is 1920. So on, so on, so on, until you get to 2010. So everything looks good so far. Now we've got to create our G label. G label, we'll call it the date label, is equal to the new G label. And we need the string first. So we're going to put the date string inside. We need our X position, which happens to be the same thing as our line position. So that's kind of nice. And then the next thing we need after that, oh, and then this one, replace it with date. Uh, next thing we want after that is our y position, which will happen to be our get height. So get height, like that. And then we got to add the label. So the add date label. OK. And then I'll add all the 12 dates that are on the graph. OK. Um, but we're not done yet, right? So after you make the graph, which should have been very simple, go back to <coughs> NameSurfer. Make sure this guy changes from console program to program because now we don't want the console program anymore. We want to now 
graph our graphical interface. So uh, graph our graph, I mean. Uh, and so to do that, we need to create the instance of the class private name surfer graph. We'll call that the graph. And we'll initialize it in the initialize field. So graph is equal to uh, uh, name surfer graph, like that. Oh, I forgot the new. Okay. And then let's go ahead and add the graph, just like that. And then once you add that graph, okay, just make sure that everything looks absolutely fine here. All right. So, so far everything looks good. All you have to do is test and run it. Let's run it. And notice how we got a few issues with <coughs> where the lines are being added. So let's see what happened there. Uh, oh, I see what happened. When you remember, initializing variables are very hard. Notice how I initialized it outside the actual application so they can't read it properly. So when you look at the spacing, what happened here is that get width is 0 divided by 12 is going to give you 0. So all of them are going to line up in one spot. So to fix this problem, uh, what we need to do is we have to set the value of spacing when we created this guy. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make that into spacing and then have it called over there. Uh, we <coughs> run this program and then you're going to see it. Okay, it did not. Ah, right, 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 right. Um, I just realized something. Yes, you couldn't call it inside there because um, basically this is not what's being used to draw the whole graph. It's this guy right here, the update. Um, but the problem with the update, it doesn't retain those values. So actually, it kind of sucks, but it's better off uh, putting these values of spacing inside these guys. Okay? Um, you might figure out a better way of doing it, but <coughs> by calling it within it, uh, the get width and get height will have actual values, and then it will space everything out, and everything will look good. Um, so yeah, so because the actual drawing the graph happens from the update, uh, make sure you put the value of the spacing within the methods here so that it can retain return a number, not just zero. So I ran it again, hit OK, and there you have it. <coughs> now, uh, one little troubleshoot is 1900 shifted over, which means that we don't need that plus one there. So join, going back to the draw date label. Uh, here, we don't need the plus one, so date, just date time spacing. And then we hit the run button and everything should be shifted over to the left. And all that looks good. Now here's what I was talking about. In this program, if you were to resize the window, everything will resize as well. Okay. So that is a very, very nifty function that you can get here and not in um, not in the previous program that you worked on which is, uh, what was it? Not Hangman, what was the other one that you guys did? You guys, I believe you guys did, uh, let's see, Yahtzee, right. Yahtzee, you wouldn't be able to resize. So anyways, if you have any questions, please, 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 please like and subscribe and add any comments if you have any questions about my methods. And if you found a better way of doing something, that would be cool. Add that in the comments and then we'll take a look at it. And again, um, yes, please watch my videos. Thank you.